So what I want to do here is have a discussion about the Green Lantern Hal Jordan. And what I'm hoping here is that at the end of this video, you'll have a strong understanding of his character, as well as how his publication history has changed over the years. Created by John Broom and Gil Kane in 1959 and first appearing in DC Showcase issue number 22, Hal Jordan came out of the Silver Age resurgence of comics regarding interest in superheroes. Because the reintroduction of The Flash as Barry Allen was so well received by fans and in turn launched the Silver Age of comics, DC editor Julius Schwartz looked to continue the trend of bringing back Golden Age heroes by reintroducing the Green Lantern. However, because the original series featuring Alan Scott was cancelled due to poor sales, Schwartz sought to bring Green Lantern in on a new platform without starting a new series and potentially losing money. To this end, Schwartz used the showcase line as a way to experiment with the Green Lantern concept due to the fact that fans were already familiar with the series because like Brave and the Bold, DC Showcase was also used to introduce characters with a series of mini-stories. However, with Alan Scott's abilities rooted in magic and because science fiction was gaining popularity in pop culture with heroes like Superman incorporating this concept into his own publications, DC elected to root Hal Jordan's powers in the element of science fiction as well while maintaining what it was that made Alan Scott popular. During his premiere in DC Showcase, unlike most of the remaining DC lineup, Hal Jordan did not originally have an origin story. Instead, the event simply picked up with him being depicted as an employee of Ferris Air Base. Introducing Hal's future love interest, Carol Ferris, in the process, her character operated as an interim boss under her father, Carl Ferris. Establishing a possible romance between the two, in the midst of their flirting, a pilot broadcasts over the air that his engine is having troubles and is stalled out. Donning his Green Lantern costume, Hal Jordan recites the infamous oath of the Green Lantern Corps. In brightest day, in blackest night, no evil shall escape my sight. Let those who worship evil's might beware my power, Green Lantern's light. Taking to the sky and saving the jet, Broom and Kane used the first issue to incorporate the idea of hard light constructs from the original Green Lantern series into this comic. Using his ring to investigate the cause of the problem, Hal Jordan discovers that the radiation is being emitted from an unknown source directly to the plane which seems to be responsible for the mechanical failure. Traveling to its source, Hal Jordan discovers that a group had intentionally sabotaged the plane for reasons unknown. In addition, during the conflict with the villains, Broom and Kane establish the weakness of Hal Jordan in the form that his ring is unable to affect anything with the color yellow. This is discovered when one of the villains picks up a yellow lamp and throws it at Hal Jordan, which hits him after his rings fail to repel it. Taking the next step, as the villains flee in a yellow car, Hal Jordan confirms that he's unable to manipulate anything yellow when he tries to stop the car but fails. Targeting the wheels instead, Hal Jordan is able to incapacitate the vehicle, and as the criminals try to escape, he uses his ring to capture the group and turn them over to the nearest FBI office. Transitioning back to the Ferris Air Base, with Carol and her father Carl celebrating the capture of the criminals, Carl makes the announcement that because Carol has consistently demonstrated the ability to manage the office effectively, he's basically turning the facility over to her and in turn, spending the next two years traveling the world. As a result, the previous romantic interest between Carol and Hal is replaced by Carol viewing the relationship as employer and employee until the return of her father allows Carol to step away from the business nature of her involvement with Hal. Now following this initial story, the reception from fans was excitement due to seeing the expansion of the existing superhero lineup. Because DC was initially unable to determine whether or not the popularity of the Green Lantern was due to the comic boom of the Silver Age, as opposed to genuine interest in Hal as a character, his stories remained part of the DC Showcase line for two more issues, after which he was rolled over into his own solo series with Green Lantern issue number one. However, because the standard for superhero stories had been established by Batman as Superman and that DC's main focus was on character-centric arcs as opposed to title-wide crossovers, Broom and Kane had to play catch-up by establishing an arch-nemesis for Hal Jordan in addition to the basis behind his powers. To this end, DC launched a nine-part series titled Sinestro Returns, with issue number one providing an origin story that picked up with the current events and established a story of how it was that Hal had gained his ring. In this origin, Hal Jordan is piloting an experimental plane when his body goes limp due to a sudden loss of energy. At the same time, this energy jolt is revealed to be due to the Guardians of the Universe duplicating Hal's energy in an effort to provide two versions of him in two separate locations, one on Earth piloting the plane and one that's transported to Oa. Explaining that their abduction of Hal is due to their desire to determine his worthiness to be a Green Lantern, the Guardians provide us with a short backstory in saying that the former Green Lantern of Sector 2814 named Abensur had crash-landed after being exposed to yellow radiation waves from the sun and in turn, his power ring had searched the planet Earth for a replacement. 
While in the middle of experimenting with a test plane, Hal Jordan was captured by the Green Lantern Ring and brought before Evan Soar. Informing Hal that he had been selected due to his fearlessness, Evan Soar states that the purpose of the Green Lanterns are to protect their sectors with unwavering bravery against any foe. Establishing an inherent weakness for Hal Jordan in order to provide stories where he could be defeated, Broom and Kane had Evan Soar direct Hal's attention to the Green Lantern Battery Corps, which charges the ring for 24 hours but contains a yellow impurity that keeps the Green Lantern ring from affecting anything in the yellow color spectrum. In addition to this, if the impurity were removed, it would depower the battery, resulting in Hal Jordan losing the abilities that came with it. And so with Abin Sur succumbing to his injuries, Hal Jordan dons the ring and demonstrates his powers. Using willpower as a basis, Hal Jordan demonstrates the abilities to lift massive objects in addition to create hard-like constructs in a multitude of ways. As a result, the Guardians of the Universe deem Hal Jordan worthy of wielding the Green Lantern ring and return him to Earth after wiping his memory of their meeting. And so with issue number 7 titled, The Day 100,000 People Vanished, all of these elements came together with the first appearance of Sinestro. Originally depicted as a Green Lantern for Space Sector 1417, Sinestro had become drunk with his own power and established a citadel for himself on the home planet of Korugur. Rather than upholding the law and ensuring that justice was maintained, Sinestro established himself as a king and in doing so, only dealt with the problems he deemed worth his attention. Stripping Sinestro of his ring due to his violation of the Green Lantern Oath, the Guardians banished him to the planet Kord in the Antimatter Universe where all of his inhabitants were evil. Believing that this would result in a personal reformation or at the very least keep him confined to a single location, instead Sinestro joined with a race called the Weaponers which had previously faced Hal Jordan on three separate occasions and failed each time. With Sinestro and the Weaponers working as allies, the group developed a Viso teleporter and while monitoring Hal Jordan during a mission in Valdale City, kidnapped him along with everyone else. Using the citizens as hostages, Sinestro demands that Hal Jordan hand himself over. Acquiescing so long as the citizens are returned to Earth, Sinestro agrees, after which he encapsulates Hal Jordan in a large yellow sphere of energy. Because he had previously been a member of the Green Lantern Corps and understands the function of their power, Sinestro states that once Hal Jordan's ring runs out of energy following the 24-hour charge, he'll be defenseless at which point the group will dispense with him. While the power of his ring was unable to penetrate the bubble due to the yellow impurity, Hal realized that he was able to breathe due to the fact that the subatomic particles of carbon dioxide and oxygen were able to exit and enter the sphere. Using this logic, Hal condensed the power of his ring down to the atomic level and used it to speed up the clock and trick Sinestro into believing that the 24-hour time period had expired. Releasing Hal from the sphere with the expectation of killing him, Sinestro was attacked by Hal who sealed him in a green bubble, making him a prisoner on the planet Kord. Following this, as the final part of the story arc, in issue number 9, Broom and Kane brought Sinestro back in the story titled Battle of the Power Rings by providing Sinestro with his own ring in addition to introducing the Green Lantern Corps as well as a central power battery for the first time in the series. As a follow-up from issue number 7, Sinestro established that he had been prepared for a situation in which Hal Jordan defeated him. As a result, he had commissioned the Weaponers to develop a yellow power ring capable of overcoming the Green Lanterns due to their inability to affect the color yellow. Using this ring to escape the Green Lantern sphere that Hal had left him in, Sinestro arrived on Earth and imprisoned Hal Jordan in a yellow box. Using his ring to change his appearance to look like Hal himself, Sinestro left Earth in order to join the Green Lantern Corps during a meeting where they exchanged information on the way to use their rings as well as the various enemies that they faced. Creating a giant monster as a distraction, Sinestro charged his own ring with the energy given off by the Green Lanterns during their battle and after gaining the energy necessary, traveled to Oa with the intention of killing the Guardians. Escaping from his prison, Hal Jordan charges the ring and travels to Oa to do battle with Sinestro. And so during the conflict, while Sinestro's yellow ring initially proves to be the strongest, Hal comes to the realization that Sinestro's ring is charged using Green Lantern energy. Providing a burst of his own power, Hal's able to overtake Sinestro, shattering his ring in the process. With the rest of the Lantern Corps coming to his aid after defeating the monster, the group realizes that Hal has already overcome Sinestro. However, because their various conflicts have drained their ring's power, the group uses what energy they have left to take Sinestro to Oa as a prisoner and recharge using the central battery core. With their freshly charged rings, the Green Lantern Corps imprisons Sinestro and sends him into the depths of space, confined within a Green Lantern tube. Now following these first nine issues, the receptions by fans regarding Hal Jordan was one of intense excitement. While Batman had demonstrated the strength of human ingenuity and Superman was the original comic book superhero from the Golden Age, Hal Jordan represented something that had never been seen before in that he could create constructs that were able to take on any shape that he desired and where the original Alan Scott had demonstrated some of the abilities seen in these new Green Lantern stories, 
his comics never dealt with such an expansive universe. Continuing this trend, Gil Kane and John Broom began to create a series of unique characters that challenged Hal Jordan on both a personal and heroic level, with stories like issue number 14's The Man Who Conquered Sound, which saw the introduction of Sonar, a villain who possessed a scepter that allowed him to manipulate sound for the purpose of flight, telekinesis, and casting illusions. While these stories served to provide an undercurrent for the Green Lantern mythos during periods where the Lantern Corps and Sinestro were absent, DC also sought to tap into the element of young female readers who may have had a passing curiosity in the series. To this end, issue number 16 saw the reintroduction of the Golden Age star Sapphire in a manner similar to the Green Lantern and the Flash. Because Carol Ferris had an on-again, off-again relationship with Hal Jordan, in the story The Secret Life of Star Sapphire, Carol is abducted by a race from the planet Zamorov, which is populated entirely by women. As their tradition holds, whenever the queen of their race dies, a new queen is selected from one of the occupants in the universe who must appear exactly like the previous queen. Selecting Carol Ferris, the race endows her with the power of the Star Sapphire by way of the Royal Gem. Due to the power that she possesses, Carol Ferris is compelled to follow the direction of her race and faces the Green Lantern in an effort to prove that women are better than men. While the battle between the two was fairly even, at the conclusion of the story, because Carol had failed to defeat the Green Lantern, the Zamorovs had wiped Carol's memory and abandoned her on the planet in search of another queen, but allowed her to keep her gem. Using this as a platform, while Carol Ferris would go on to experience several more battles with Hal Jordan, the concept of the Star Sapphire was carried over to include other women like Della Faron, Deborah Camille Darnell, and Jillian Perlman, among others. While this method of storytelling remained the standard for the Green Lantern stories, because Sinestro and the Green Lantern Corps weren't constant threats in the stories due to DC looking to establish Hal Jordan as his own hero, the sales of Green Lantern comics began to slump as a result of the increased popularity of the Batman and Superman titles. While DC had incorporated Hal Jordan into the Justice League in 1960 as a way to boost his popularity among readers, by 1965, his solo series was suffering. Looking to the popularity of the Flash of Two Worlds crossover in 1961 and the success that came with it, under Gil Kane and Sid Green, issue number 40 saw the return of Alan Scott as well as the introduction of Krona, the expansion of the Guardians of the Universe mythos, and the origin of the Green Lantern Corps. And while this story was mildly successful among fans, the Green Lantern title continued to slump in sales. As a result, where DC introduced Guy Gardner in 1968 with issue number 59 titled Earth's Other Green Lantern, in 1970 with issue number 76, under the direction of DC editor Julius Schwartz, writer Dennis O'Neill was paired with Neil Adams where they took over the series in an effort to make Hal Jordan more socially relevant. Working together, the Green Lantern solo series was cancelled and renamed to Green Lantern, Green Arrow, with the two heroes teaming up. While these stories earned critical acclaim for their focus on more real-world elements like issue number 85, Snowbirds Don't Fly, which saw Green Arrow sidekick Speedy coping with heroin addiction, because the civil rights movement had thrown the race relations of blacks and whites into the limelight but had effectively ended in 1968 and 1971 as a way to tap into the African-American demographic, Dennis O'Neill and Neil Adams introduced Jon Stewart as another Green Lantern with issue number 87 titled Beware My Power. However, because neither Green Lantern or Green Arrow were wildly popular among fans, despite these changes in character creations, the duo continued to see mediocre sales, and after issue number 89, the Green Lantern Green Arrow series was rolled over into The Flash with issue number 217 through issue number 219, where the ongoing story arc was concluded and then cancelled. Following this, DC dropped the Green Arrow aspect from the Green Lantern Green Arrow name, where the series remained as a backup feature until Flash issue number 246. Now in 1976, with Dennis O'Neill continuing to write the series and Mike Grell joining on as artist to replace Neil Adams, who had moved on to a series of sporadic jobs, Green Lantern was taken back out of the Flash series with the title's name returned to Green Lantern Green Arrow, with the numbering picking up at issue number 90. Maintaining the team of Hal Jordan and Oliver Queen, the story saw a larger emphasis on spacefaring battles and the incorporation of the Green Lantern Corps, even if only in a small role. This combined with the rising popularity of the Justice League during the Jerry Conway years meant that the Green Lantern title began to see a resurgence in popularity, and by issue number 123 in 1979, Hal Jordan was returned to his own solo series and Green Arrow was moved to his own feature in World's Finest. Continuing to build on the Green Lantern mythos, in May of 1981, writer Lynn Wine introduced a three-part miniseries titled Tales of the Green Lantern Corps, which saw all 3,600 members pulled together for the purpose of defeating Krona and his attempts to return to the universe. Due to the series' popularity, particularly in the realm of members who had not been seen before, in 1982 with issue number 148, DC began to introduce stories involving these other members of the Green Lantern Corps as backup features that focus on their own adventures in other sectors. 
Because these stories were so successful and because fans were slowly beginning to grow bored of Hal Jordan, Len Wein tried to reinvigorate interest in the series with a story between issues number 172 and 181 titled Take This Job and Shove It, which saw Hal Jordan removed as Earth's Green Lantern and replaced with Jon Stewart in issue number 183. While this was short-lived due to the launch of Crisis on Infinite Earths in 1987, following the event's conclusion and the reboot of DC's continuity, with issue number 200, Steve Englehart had taken over for Len Wein and in addition to rebooting the continuity, retold the origins of the Guardians of the Universe and with issue number 201, retitled the series The Green Lantern Corps and provided Earth with seven Green Lantern members composed of Orissa, Chip the Squirrel, Hal Jordan, Jon Stewart, Kat Matui, Salak, and Kilowog who was introduced in this issue. However, because the John Byrne reboot of Superman had caused a resurgence in the Man of Steel's popularity as well as Frank Miller's Dark Knight Returns, allowing Batman to overtake Superman in popularity, the new run of Green Lantern was short-lived with DC canceling the title after only 24 issues. Returning in 1990 with Volume 3 under the writing of Gerard Jones and Pat Broderick, because fans were lukewarm to the character, in 1993, DC sought to eliminate Hal Jordan from the series entirely and replace him with a more contemporary hero that could identify with younger fans. To this end, Ron Mars was tasked with writing the three-part series Emerald Twilight, which would see the villain Hank Henshaw, also known as Cyborg Superman, engage in a battle with the Eradicator, one of four characters claiming to be the Man of Steel following the Death of Superman event. During their battle, the villain Mongol attacked Coast City and completely destroyed it. With Hal Jordan off-planet at the time, he returned to find his home destroyed along with most everyone he knew. Using his power ring to reconstruct the city, once the power of the ring wore off, he was called before the Guardians of the Universe and reprimanded for using his power for selfish reasons. Instructed to return to Oa and give up his ring, Hal Jordan quite literally cut a swath through the Green Lantern Corps, killing every single member in the process. Arriving on Oa, Jordan kills Kilowog, Sinestro, as well as all the Guardians except for Gantlet, who was kept alive using the force of the remaining Guardians. During the story, DC also introduced Kyle Rayner as a struggling artist. With Hal Jordan casting aside his role as a Green Lantern, declaring himself to be Parallax, and with the Lantern Corps wiped out, Gantlet reformed Hal Jordan's ring, sent it to Earth where it located and endowed Kyle Rayner with its power, making him the last Green Lantern. And picking up on the four-part series titled Emerald Fallout under writer Chuck Dixon, former Green Lantern Guy Gardner, having previously acquired Sinestro's yellow power ring, became aware of the Green Lantern's destruction. Investigating Oa alongside Martian Manhunter, Wonder Woman, Darkstar, and others, the group found that they had been led into a trap by Hal Jordan. Defeating the group and putting Guy Gardner in a coma, the story led into DC's attempts to correct lingering continuity issues following Crisis on Infinite Earths with the story Zero Hour, Crisis in Time. Centering on Hal Jordan attempting to remake reality, the events of the story saw him traveling to the end of time, killing a being named Time Trapper who had the power to control future time and attempt to remake the universe in his own image. While future stories like 1998's Emerald Knights and 1999's Day of Judgment would see the time displaced Hal Jordan meeting Kyle Rayner in addition to undertaking the mantle of the Spectre, because the sales of the Green Lantern title were beginning to slump and his character had appeared in DC New Frontier by Darwin Cook, in 2004, writer Jeff Johns was assigned to return Hal Jordan to the DC landscape with a six-part story titled Green Lantern Rebirth. With that being said, we're going to bring this video to an end, and I will catch you guys later. Peace.